Hi, I'm David with Portrait Displays, and in this video, we're gonna talk about calibrating the Sony PVM-A170 or Sony PVM-A250 using Calman. Well, let's get started. First, I'm gonna launch Calman. While Calman's launching, let's talk a little bit about the Sony PVM-A170 that we have here. Our main controls are gonna be the menu button, the back button, and the selector here on the bottom. I'm gonna press menu. First, it brings us up to a status page. You'll notice there's four pages. What I love about the status page on the Sony is that it allows me to quickly ascertain what signal's coming in, if a signal's coming in, and in what calibration the display is currently targeting. Let's go through it. I'm gonna take the selector, press enter, and now I can see I'm sending 1080p, 2398, 444 RGB. It's in limited range, normal scan mode, as I come down to the next page, I'm in user preset one. My color space is actually set to native. My EOTF is at 2.4. So I can ascertain that this display is currently in native with a 2.4 EOTF narrow range. Let's press back and come down one more. Now we're on the color temp, color space and gamma page. The color temp is currently set to user one. If I change that, I can select different user settings I calibrate, or I can go through standard calibrations from Sony, such as D65, D93, and back to user one. Now, if we come down, we can adjust our gain and bias when in the user mode. I'm gonna press enter. We'll notice we have some gain adjustments here, and the bias is at the default zero. Let's come back. You can copy a color temp from another mode if you'd like here. And if we come down to color space, you'll notice we're in native. I'm gonna calibrate this display for BT709. So I'm gonna press enter here and change it from native back to our BT709. You'll notice there's quite a bit of color spaces built into the Sony PVMA170 that you're able to target during your calibration process. I'll keep my gamma EOTF at 2.4 and let's come back from that part of the menu. Let's go down to user configuration. Now on the Sony PVMA170, we can come over here to user preset setting. On the user preset setting here, you're able to save configurations and calibrations and load them as needed. Therefore, you can have many calibrations and you can recall them at will. Let's come back and we have our input setting. Here's where we're gonna adjust our SDI settings such as dual link on or off, depending on if we're using single link SDI or dual link. We can also set our SDI RGB range between limited or full. I'm gonna leave it on limited because I'm gonna be working in BT709 limited or narrow range. You also have a setting for DVI RGB range if you're working with the DVI input and your SDI payload detection if you wanna use that, you can toggle that on and off. Lastly, we have the function button settings. The function button settings are extremely versatile. You're able to set them however you'd like, but keep in mind that if you're calibrating the monitor, these are the buttons that are gonna give you access to brightness, contrast, and chroma. For now, we have F1 set to brightness, F2 set to contrast, and F3 set to chroma. And let's back out of the menu as these are the controls that we're gonna rely on for the calibration of the Sony PVM A170. Now, since we're shooting a video, I've moved my colorimetry research CR300 and CR100 slightly over to the side of the monitor so that you can see the menu as I calibrate it. Typically, you would usually set the meters at the center of the screen and then just work around the menu. But since we want you to see everything we're doing, we've got them slightly shifted. With Calman loaded, let's come up to the Calman menu come over to workflow template, we'll come over to calibration and choose broadcast monitor. The Sony PVM-A170 and Sony PVM-A250 are typically used as SDR monitors. As such, we're gonna choose the SDR calibration in our workflow. And at this stage, Calman's asking us to connect to our hardware. Now, while I'm already connected to the CR300, I need to connect to my CR100. So I'm gonna press find meter and choose COM7 and press search. And now Calman's connected to the colorimetry research CR100. Now, while I'm using the colorimetry research meters today, it's important to note that Calman supports a large variety of meters and you can use any of them to perform this calibration. For now, we're gonna use our colorimetry research. Now let's come back to Calman and set up our colorimetry research CR100. I'm gonna click on the meters tab 
and come down to meter profile. Now before we started this video, I created a meter profile for the Sony PVM-A170 using the CR300. I'm going to select that profile. If you aren't familiar with profiling meters and you're working in a similar workflow to mine, please watch our meter profiling video. There's a link down below. Let's come back to Calman, and now we're going to want to choose our source. Today, I'm using the Virtual Forge Pattern Generator connected to the AJA IO 4K Plus card. It's connected to the Sony via an SDI cable. So I'm going to come back to Calman. I'm going to choose my manufacturer as SpectraCal. I'm going to come down here to Virtual Forge. And you notice Calman has found it on the network. We'll select it and press connect. Now we don't need to connect to the display because the Sony does not have direct display control integrated with Calman. Let's press next and let's choose our calibration targets. Now we're working with the Sony PVM-A170, or if you're working with the Sony PVM-A250, both of those panels use an RGB OLED from Sony. Those panels have two common methods of calibration. The first one is to calibrate to D65 using the CIE1931 color matching function. The other method is an alternative white point that is based on the Judd modified color matching function. In my experience as a calibrator, I find about half of my customers like using the alternative white point and about half of my customers like using the D65 CIE 1931 standard. For today, let's target the alternative white point so that you have an idea of how you'd approach that yourself. Let's come back to Calman and change our white point from the 3127 to 3067, 3180 per the Sony recommended white point offset. We'll keep our color space at Rec. 709 sRGB, and let's change our EOTF to a power 2.4. Let's press next, and now we're on a page to take our pre-calibration capture. I'm going to come down to the bottom right and choose Read Series. Okay, so our pre-calibration capture is finished. We are going a little towards blue. Little minus green here, as you can see, but more, more leaning towards that bluish magenta. And as you can see, our EOTF here is actually tracking a 2.4 really nicely, our target curve. We're at 101 nits. We're a nit high, but I'm not going to lose sleep over that. And the Delta E2000 has a max 3.6 with an average 2 on the grayscale. And our Delta E2000 on the colorimetry is a max 3.6 with an average 1.2. I think we can get these better as we work through the calibration process. So let's go over to the left side here and let's choose white balance. That seems to be where our error is the largest. I'm going to select white balance. I'm going to choose 100 because I want to start with white and I'm going to hit read continuous. So now you'll see we have white on the screen. I am using a slightly larger window than you might use when you're performing your calibration because I did move my meteors over. Typically you'd use about a 10% window. We are using about a 25% window here. I'm going to press menu. We're going to scroll down to color temp, color space, and gamma. Hit select come down to adjust gain bias, hit select. And now let's look at where we want to start. Currently, blue looks a little high on our RGB balance, and we're at 3043, 3119. So I'm going to come over to blue at 156, and I'm going to select it and start turning it down. And I'm going to watch the chart. I can watch the RGB balance chart as it comes down, or I can actually look at the numbers. As I reduce blue, you're going to see X go up and Y go up. So we're at 3064, 315. It looks like we're a little on green. So I'm going to press, and this is very important, I'm going to press the select enter button. If you simply hit back, you're not going to save your adjustment. You always want to press the select enter button on the Sony, select enter. So I'm going to take me back to the menu. I'm going to come up to green. I'm going to hit select enter. And now let's put a little more green into the image. And here we are measuring 3063, 3182. The only problem I'm noticing here is I am targeting BT709 at 100 nits. And if you look here, my Candela's Premier Squared, my nits, is actually at 102. So I've actually increased luminance a little more than we'd like to. So I'm going to actually take green, turn it down by one. I'm going to take red, turn it down by one. And by reducing the blue gain, by one, we've effectively reduced all three, which has reduced the luminance on the Sony display. So we've brought that luminance down. Let's take a look where we're at. We're still at 101, 102. So let's go down by two now. And take blue down to 148. We'll take the green gain down to 127. 
and we'll take the red down to 123. Said so enter, let's exit, and let's see where we're at. We are at 100.4. So we're at 3064, 3177, 100 nits. We're hitting our white point target and we're hitting our nit target. Now, let's go to the multi point grayscale here on the left. We'll hit stop on our reading and we'll go to the multi point grayscale. And I'm going to hit read series down here in the bottom right. And what this is going to do is it's going to sweep the grayscale from black to white to let us know how our RGB balance is performing throughout the range. Okay. So our multi-point grayscale is finished and our RGB balance looks pretty tight. We're tracking our 2.4 EOTF really nicely. We've got a max of 0.7 on our Delta E2000 with an average of 0.4, very good results. If we come down here to our data, we can swipe that over to 100 and we can see we're hitting 100.6 nits. So we are hitting our nit target. But the grayscale only tells us one part of things. So let's hit next and let's take a color space measurement. This color space measurement is gonna show us if we're hitting the right color space, meaning it's gonna measure the outer portion of the color space and let us know if we're in BT709, which is our target, or if we're off 709 and we need to address it. Okay, our color space setting has finished measuring and it does look like we are hitting the targets for BT709, which leads me to believe that the monitor is actually in 709 and tracking 709 as we would expect. We have a max delta E2000 of 0.6 and an average of 0.5. Now what this doesn't tell me is it doesn't tell me how the color gamut mapping is happening inside the color gamut. It just tells me the edge cases here. So I'm gonna switch over to the post-cal capture and press measure just so we have a record of it from our pre-cal when we started the calibration in this video. And then we're gonna go into some additional validations where we're able to see really how well the color gamut mapping is performing. Okay, our post-calibration capture has completed and we have a max delta E2000 on the grayscale of 0.7 with an average of 0.3. And on the colorimetry, we have a max delta E2000 of 0.6 with an average of 0.4. Now, if we come back to our pre-calibration capture, that's in contrast to a max 3.6 Delta E2000 on the grayscale with an average of two, and a 3.6 max on the Delta E2000 for colorimetry with an average of 1.2. So we've been able to improve the calibration on this Sony PVMA 170 going through the process. But once again, I do wanna take a look at how the color gamut is really mapping on the display. So let's go over to Color Checker, and let's hit Read Series in the bottom right. Now on the color checker, what I really like about it is that it's gonna not only measure the outer part of the color gamut, but also the inner part. And the reason we wanna measure the inner part is because you might be able to get great results on the outer part of the color gamut, but the flesh tones and other colors that are most often in content aren't quite right. As we can see here, now that the color checker is finished, our calibration measurements are hitting the calibration targets on the CIE 1976 U'V' chart, and our max delta E2000 is a 0.7 with an average of 0.4. Excellent results from the Sony PVMA 170 here, tracking just as we would expect, hitting its targets, ensuring that flesh tones and other colors inside the gamut are being mapped properly. We can come over to the saturation sweeps on the left, and we can do one final measurement if we would like, just to see how the saturation sweeps are performing within Calman. I always like to do these additional validations so that we have a better understanding of how the monitor is performing. Okay, the saturation sweeps have finished. As you can see, we're hitting all of our targets. Our max error is 0.8, our average of 0.4. Excellent results, once again, on the saturation sweeps. Now, there's a couple other things I'd like to talk about regarding the Sony PVM-A170 or the Sony PVM-A250, if you happen to be using that one. If we press menu, you'll notice we can come down to the user configuration, and we're gonna go to user preset setting. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit save. This is gonna allow me to save the calibration that I just performed into one of the five user presets. So I'm gonna hit user preset one and hit confirm. Now I've just saved the results. So if anyone touches the monitor or if anything happens, I can always go back and load user preset one and get right to my calibration. Now what if you were doing another calibration? Let's say you were calibrating for DCI-P3 or you were calibrating for BT-2020. You can also save those, but if you wanted to recall those, you may not wanna always have to come into the menu. So you can back out of this menu and come down to the function button settings. Now I can take any of these function buttons and change them. So let's take F1 as the brightness and let's change that to user preset one. Now I'm able to hit the F1 button to recall my calibration. So let's put up a pattern and test this. I just put up a contrast pattern. I'm gonna exit the menu. I'm now gonna hit 
F2, which is contrast. And I'm going to turn the contrast way, 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 way up. As you can see, I'm now clipping white on the screen. Now, if I wanted to get back to my calibration because this had mistakenly gotten adjusted, we can come over to F1, press it, and as you can see, the monitor just came back into user preset one. And there you have it. Calibration of the Sony PVM A170 or A250 using Calman. We hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.